Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Tom with Pilot Institute. Uh, today we're bringing you a full length flight. I've got Matt here with me. He's gonna be my passenger. And we're gonna fly here from Prescott all the way to Flagstaff here in Arizona. I'm gonna show you how to start the airplane, how I get the taxi clearances, as well as how I get out of the airport. And then once we get into Flagstaff, getting in there and landing. So hopefully you can learn something. You should see some stuff that's pretty cool out here. It's a beautiful day to go out and fly. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and we'll get into it. Okay, so the first thing that's uh, very important is uh, we, that we use the checklist. So right here, for starting the airplane, we're just gonna follow the checklist. So the pre-flight inspection is complete, the Hobbs and tax time is checked out, the passenger briefing. Okay, so since you're my passenger, let me go ahead and give you my briefing. So this is a non-smoking flight. The emergency exit location is these doors right here. To exit, lift this handle, push the door open, and then we exit in the event of a hard landing. We get out however we can. Um, seat belts are to be worn at all times. To release, push the red button, pull up over the shoulder. Shoulder harnesses are worn. Seat backs upright and locked for taxi, takeoff, and landing. And then we also will use a positive exchange of controls. So I start with the controls. If you want the flight controls or I want to give you the flight controls, I will say your controls. Then you would take the controls and then you would say my controls and then I confirm you're flying the airplane by saying your controls. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay, any questions about that briefing? Nope. Alrighty. All right, so our seat, seats and seat belts are locked and on. <clears throat> our brakes are tested so far. Uh, fuel selector is gonna go to both. Our fuel shutoff valve is in. Our circuit breakers are all good. Our avionics switch is off. Our electrical equipment is all off. Okay, for starting, we want the prop area to be clear. So far, I don't see any hazards. Our electrical master switch comes on. Throttle is going to go open a quarter inch. So to make sure it's a quarter inch, we go all the way back, which is the equivalent of being off the gas, and then we push in about a quarter inch. The, let's see, the master switch, double checking that it's on. The flashing beacon is on, and then priming. So the way that we start this right now is we, uh, when we shut it off, we basically start the engine of fuel. So we need to get some fuel in it. So we have an electric fuel pump. We're gonna turn that on. And then we're gonna look right here for our fuel flow. So once that goes positive, we go to idle mixture cutoff and then turn the fuel pump off. So like right now, there's no fuel to the engine. Pushing it in puts fuel to the engine, okay? So then our ignition switch, we're gonna go to start. And before we do, I double check and clear, clear prop. And then once the engine actually fires, we're gonna go mixture full rich. Normally she starts pretty easy, but. Hear me? I got you. Alright, turning on the noise canceling on my headset. There it goes. Are oh, you got me on your end? What's that? You have me? Yeah. Yeah, just move that a little bit closer to your mouth. Okay. Alright, that works. Alright, so the avionics, let's see, okay. Avionics master switch is on. We're starting up the Abidine. And it's still still waking up, but we're good. And then flaps are already up. Okay, so for before our taxi, our mixture, we're gonna lean it for 1,000 RPM. So we can do big adjustments and small adjustments on the mixture. So if we wanna make a big adjustment, we push this button in and then we can just move it however we want. If we wanna make small adjustments, we just spin it out or we spin it in. For okay. a taxi at this high elevation, we want it about one knuckle from here to here out. 
and then we'll lean it in the air and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. All right, so then now basically, because it's nice and cold, it's 40 degrees out right now, we're letting our engine warm up. And while we do that, we're gonna get our current weather. See if it's still on. So our weather is 127.2. Holiday taxiway, car life for runway two on left, location not standard. Hazardous weather information with the Arizona available on fly service frequencies. Advice on initial contact, you have echo. Prescott Tower information, echo 1553 Zulu, wind 210 at 3, visibility 10, clear below 12000. Temperature minus one, dew point minus eight, altimeter three zero three one. Visual approaching use, landing runways two on left and two on right, landing holds for operation effect. Outbounds advise ground control, direction of departure, inbounds southwest through north, contact tower one two eight point seven five. Inbounds northeast through south, contact tower one two five point three. Notice to air missions, warning, runway 21 right has been shortened, 4,396 feet available. All right, so they put out the information on a loop like that, so we don't have, so they don't, every time someone starts their airplane, they don't have to repeat the information. So it's just an easier way of doing that. So we know we got echo, and then when we go to our, let's see. I always pull up the airport diagram. So we pull up the airport diagram like this, little blue dot on here is us, and it's gonna show us. So two one left is this runway right here. So most of the time the taxiway clearance they're gonna give us is Charlie, which is gonna be this taxiway right here. And then we're gonna taxi down. There's a runway right here. They're gonna say cross runway one two, to taxi via Charlie down to runway two one left. That's, okay. Most of the time that's what they give us. <coughs> All right. So our altimeter setting is 3031, so we want to set our altimeter 3031. And there goes my noise canceling because my battery's about dead. All right. And then our brakes, I'll check the brakes once we start going. And then we'll get our taxi clearance. All right, we ready? I'm ready. All right, just double check your door is locked. It looks like it is. Yes. All right. We are clear left, center, and right. We're gonna add a little bit of power. Left brake, right brake, both brakes. All right, go ahead and check your brakes. Just tap the left, left at the top. That's the, okay, so at the very top of the brakes, at the bottom is the rudder, which is why we turned. But okay. at the top of the brakes is, the, or the top of the rudders is the brakes. There you go. So, very top, check the right. And then let, and then check the top of the left, and try them both at the same time. All right, and we are good. Oh. All right. So, so right here, this is called the ramp, and this is an uncontrolled area of the airport. So air traffic control can't tell us what to do. But we have this solid line with this broken line right here, and this is the the. Uh, difference between the movement and the non-movement area. The non-movement area is not controlled by ATC, the movement area is. So before we cross that line, we've got to um, get a clearance from them and we're on the frequency, so I'm gonna go ahead and call them. Let's see. Prescott Ground, November 402, Echo Romeo on the south ramp. Information Echo would like a northeast departure. Then 402, Carmine, on Pesci, Grand Runway 21 left, taxi via Charlie, cross runway 30. Okay, 21 left via Charlie, cross runway 30, November 402, Echo Romeo. Echo no, Echo Romeo, did you have ADIS Echo? I missed it. Yes, sir, information Echo. Thank you. All right, clear right, clear center, and clear left. Uh, 
Pacific Ground Riddle 2, Alpha 2, and right Alpha 2, taxi. So now as we're taxiing, so when we're on the ground here, we have what's called a sterile cockpit. So we're not talking about what we're doing this weekend or what, you know, what your wife made for dinner last Riddle night or anything like that. We're Bravo only four, focused four, on four, things that are of safety two, and importance. Alpha, so like right Bravo now, four, if there's an airplane Charlie. coming, you could say and there's an airplane right there. But that's otherwise, we just want to focus on getting... Uh, taxi back safely to down to the end of the runway down the taxiway without any kind of incursion. So I always call it left, cent clear left center and right, no as well as when I approach right. a runway, I say I'm approaching three. runway 30. The tower has provided us a clearance to cross the runway. So we are cleared across this runway. We are clear left, clear center, and clear right. And there's the tower right there. And our taxi speed is just this idling. So our taxi speed is, it's, some people will taxi a lot quicker, like with our taxi speed right now, um, it, it's, the best way to describe it is a brisk walk. Okay. Like we don't want to be going too fast, but at the same time, we don't want to take forever to get down to the end of the runway. We just want to get there safely. So it depends. Um, I mean, I've seen people coming down here at 25 knots, usually about 15, clear left, center, right. About 15 is my maximum that I'll do on the ramp. Okay. And our speed is notated. So our airspeed is too slow, but over here on the ground speed, I think it's... I'll have to mess with it later, because right now we got this airplane up ahead. It's usually displayed somewhere on this, uh, okay. on the, the GPS. I have it on my iPad too, but... So we got this airplane up here on the left. They're holding short. Uh, airplane on the left holding short, clear center, clear right. Riddle 2 hold short, everyone right, 2 and left at Charlie 4. Riddle 2 hold short, 2 and left, Charlie 4. Riddle 2 cross, 2 and Charlie 4, hold short at Delta. Now the way, that we keep left, the, hold short Delta. the way that we keep the center line on, uh, we want the nose wheel going Riddle right down the center line of the taxiway, right? right? So Riddle the way two, that we do Delta that Fox is when you look at this line, it should be your inside leg it should be... Taxi to the west ramp via Charlie Foxtrot. The line should After basically the, uh, be right underneath left. your inside leg. Taxi back. I mean, so like Charlie right now it's probably Fox more underneath 25. you, and right about there should be underneath that uh, your inside leg. Yes, correct. It's nice. The airport's not too busy right now. At times, do you have people stacked up here waiting? Uh, yeah, it's like probably most likely when we get back, you'll see with Embry Riddle being around here how uh, how busy this airport actually gets. But if there's but like if there's ever a safety concern, we just stop. We stop and we ask the tower what they want us to do, and we can also offer a suggestion of what we would like to do. For example, you're going to see once we get up past this intersection. Um, that's where we're going to do our run-up. We, che we check the systems to make sure everything's working properly. Well, the last time that we, uh, me and Ethan flew, there was an airplane that was doing the run-up right there, and we couldn't safely get by. So we stopped right here, and we actually asked for an intersection departure. So we took off right here instead of going all the way down to the end of the runway. But you've got to be, you know, always in the name of safety. You can do whatever you need to do to be safe. But you got to get the tower's two, approval zero, for echo, anything if you want to change something. Turn they need right to know on what's taxiway going on. Delta, so take a hold right here. short yeah. of Delta okay. Four. Yeah, we are able to take a shortcut right, right there if Delta, we really short, if we really Delta needed four, to. Four, but like today, zero, it's not very busy. So, all right, so we're just going to offset right here, and then I always double check behind us, make sure there's no airplanes coming up, so we're not holding anyone back, and then we go back to the checklist. So our before takeoff, so our parking brake set, passenger seat backs are upright, most upright positions, seats and seat backs are closed or are, are secure, cabin doors, just verify it's locked, 
flight controls. So for the flight controls, what we do is called boxing the flight controls. So we're going to go full forward and then to the left. We want our left aileron up, our right aileron is down. Now as we pull back towards us, the elevator in the very back comes up. And the, in the very back. Yep. And then we go to the right, right aileron comes up, left aileron goes two and left down, at Delta four. and then Attack pull forward, the our elevator the, uh, goes back Bravo down. Four, Bravo. So if we found any binding or anything in there, we would four, want to have that four. checked out. We don't want to fly uh, Bravo, like Bravo, that. Four to North ramp. All right. The flight controls are good, flight instruments. Ground, the only riddle, issue is their vertical Sierra, speed is showing a hundred uh, foot two, descent uh, as our, when we're sitting level. So that's going to be our new zero. We're going to check our compass. We're showing at about a hey, Fox Rose, Kerner, Prescott, zero eight three, zero. zero three, one, so we want to set riddle seven two Sierra, our directional ground, gyro to be a delta. about two zero eight zero. And then our fuel quantity, delta, riddle they're zero. both showing full. And then our mixture is going to go rich, but we're going to leave it at high elevation. Fuel selector valve, we're double checking it's on both. Our throttle, we're going to go up to 1,800 RPM. All right, now we're going to check our magnetos. Magnetos is our ignition system. We want to make sure we don't have excessive mag drop. All right, so we're going to start with the right. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then we go back to both. I saw about 1770, which is about a 50 RPM drop. Now we're 1830. We're going to check the left. One, two, three, four, five. It's about a 1740. So we're looking at about a 80 RPM drop. So that's within, and right here it gives us, should be 50 within each other, which it is, should not exceed 150 RPM. So our magnetos are good. And then we check our vacuum gauge, which is right here, which supplies these uh, these two instruments. And so we are good there. We are in the green. Engine instruments and ammeter are good. Annunciation panel is right here. There's nothing on, but we can test it. Let's see. So now we're going to do our idle check. So when we go back and we pull power to idle, we don't want her to stall out and die because that would be a little bit of a surprise. We don't like that. So here at idle, she doesn't stall out and die. So we're good. So we go back to 1,000 RPM. Check the friction lock. It's good and tight. Strobe lights, we will turn those on. Pre-takeoff brief. Okay, so we're going to be taking off from runway 21 left. What we're going to do is if we have an issue before rotation speed, we're just going to pull power to idle, apply brakes heavily, get off the runway if possible, deal with whatever issue we have. If we've rotated and we have sufficient runway remaining, we're going to set back down on the runway, then we're going to pull power to idle, apply brakes, get off the runway, deal with whatever issue we have. If we don't have sufficient runway, we're going to pitch for best glide of 68 and land where practical. If we're 0 to 500 feet above the runway, we're going to pick a spot 30 degrees off the nose and execute a forced landing. If we're 500 to 1,000 feet off the ground, we're going to pick a spot 60 Five degrees thousand. off the nose uh, and execute a forced landing. And we're not going to try to come back to the airport North unless we're higher than a thousand feet above the ground, at which point we'll pick a spot 90 degrees off the nose for that emergency landing. Any questions Dragon on that? Zero zero five, no. Charlie, press the ground, two one right. right taxi via so radios. We're going to switch over to tower, which we'll call them once we get right over here. Then we can go direct. <coughs> okay. Uh, there's Flagstaff. Cessna zero zero Alpha, follow Cessna left cross. So we're good right there. Inside, follow Cessna zero zero Alpha. And then we've got the we've got tower in wing flat. Oh, let's see elevator trim. We want to make sure this is set for takeoff. So we're good there. Our flaps are set for takeoff. Our lights are set, and we'll get off the brakes. Any questions? Because we're about to go up in the air. Let's do it. All righty. <coughs> All right, so no one coming. Friction lock might be a little stiff. Riddle 55, say altitude. We're correcting, Riddle 55. Thank you. Oh, we got a Press jet the coming Riddle in. 72 nice. Sierra, holding short of runway 2 and left at Delta 7. Riddle 72 Sierra, Prescott Tower, enter. Prescott Tower, November 402, Echo Romeo, holding short runway 21 left at Charlie 7. 
Total 55, runway 2 and left, continue. Traffic holding position. Ah. 55. That's nice. Riddle 72, Sierra, runway 2 and left, line up white, traffic Cessna left down. That's cool, Jeff. Line up and wait, yeah. Riddle 72, with Sierra. Cessna 402, Echo Romeo, Prescott Tower, hold short of runway 2 and left. Hold short 2 and left, November 402, Echo Romeo. All right, so now we're just waiting for our clearance. They gave him one first. I think there's an airplane coming in. Make sure I'm connected to my sentry. There is. Like Sotcom 3800. Yeah, Verify parking at Cutter. Uh, a farm Cutter for Sotcom 3800. So like you can see on here, Sotcom on my iPad, we can see the yeah, airplane coming Delta in. Three, there he is. Delta 3, contact ground 127. Delta 3 over the ground, 130. And then it tells us who they are and their altitude. So this is a good backup, but our primary is we're always looking outside. Yeah, he's going over here to the other runway. What program is this? This is four flight. Okay. Yeah, everybody uses Force Light. Riddle 72 Sierra, fly straight out, runway 2 and left, clear for takeoff. Fly straight out, runway 2 and left, clear for takeoff, Riddle 72 Sierra. Cessna 2 Echo Romeo, runway 2 and left, line up and wait, traffic Cessna left down. 2 and left, line up and wait, November 402 Echo Romeo. Alright, so line up and wait means we're going to do what he did. We just come out on the runway and we get set up, but we don't take off until he clears us for takeoff. So one thing I always do, Tower, we want to double two check, one, two, two, Gulf, Wind, final Fox, is, Trot, this is final, uh, the traffic the pattern, there's nobody stop, in it, so park. it is clear, Plan so we always two, one, verify two, two, Gulf, that. Prescott Tower, enter midfield left down on runway 2 and left. Midfield left down when 2 and so left. right two, here, two, we line up with center line. And now we're just sitting here, watching him take off. the 2 Echo Romeo, fly straight out, runway 2 and left, clear for takeoff. Fly straight out, 2 and left, clear for takeoff, November 402 Echo Romeo. All right, so when we take off, we add full power. Riddle 55, runway we 2 and left, clear We maintain center line with go. the rudder pedals. We verify our gauges are in the green. Now we're looking for our airspeed to come alive. System 0 Joe Alpha, number 2, follow Cessna left base. 0 Joe Alpha. System 0 Joe Alpha, runway 2 and left, clear okay. touching go. Airspeed's alive. Number 2 Joe Alpha. Gauges are still in the Lance green. Two, two, now we're looking for 55. Left base for two There's left. 55, and left we rotate. Base, two, one left. Two, two, go. Maintain that center line. Drifted just a hair. And now we're climbing. We want 76. Traffic, 12 o'clock. Yes, thank you. We see them. So he said fly straight out, so we're just flying literally straight out. <laughs> we got an airplane right here directly ahead of us, and then we got one over here as well. I didn't see that one at first. I saw that one. That's the one that took off before us. Yep. <laughs> Trying to figure out which direction that airplane's going. So we're at uh, 600 feet? Yes. Yep. 5,034 is the airport elevation. So yeah, we're just passing 600 feet over the runway, or off the uh, ground. He's going to give us a turn outside of this guy. Oh, we're still waiting for that. Yep, he hasn't told us we could do it yet, so we're right now just flying straight out like he told us to do. Just the two Echo Romeo. You're drifting right, turn 15 degrees left. 15 degrees left, November 402 Echo Romeo. Riddle 72 Sierra, left close traffic approved. Left close traffic approved, Riddle 72 Sierra. Oh yeah, we did, we did drift quite a bit. Cessna 2 Echo Romeo, traffic 1 o'clock in a mile, Cessna left crossing. Have that traffic in sight, November 402 Echo Romeo. Cessna 2 Echo Romeo, pass behind them, then left down on departure approved. All right, behind that traffic, then a left downwind, departure is approved, November 402 Echo Romeo. Tower, Riddle 50, I request the option on this one. So they actually, uh, they have control over you more than I thought. I thought once you left the ground that they were done. No, they they can really oh, tell you what to do. Fly straight out. Straight out, Riddle 55. Riddle 55, I think I stepped on you. Fly straight out. Straight out, Riddle 55. Lance 2-2 two, two, Golf, runway 2-1 left, clear to land. 2-1 left, clear to land, 2-2 two, two, Golf. 
All right, so they're past us, so now we get to start our turn. And do we have it mapped, like waypoints, like you know where you're going? Yeah, so I'm, I've got it on the iPad. Like right now, it's, let me get let me get out of here first, but once we're on the map, if I hit direct and I go enter, enter, there's our, there's our route. Oh, okay. All right, we're still climbing. Everything's still looking good. Riddle 55, left close traffic proof. Left close traffic approved, Riddle 55. Cessna 2 Echo Romeo, frequency change approved. Frequency change approved, November 402 Echo Romeo. Good day. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I've never really had that happen. I think that because, so we had the two airplanes going out. I think when I was taken off, I picked up the wrong one because I was trying to follow them. Yeah, so that's why you drifted? Yeah, that's. I was following the one on the, on the <laughs> runway to the right because I didn't, yeah, something to be aware of. System is zero to an alpha, fly straight out. Alright, so then we alpha. have one, two, seventy two two, three, three number two, point follow five. Lance, left base. We'll switch frequency. So there's a practice frequency out here that all the airplanes tend to talk on. Okay, there your traffic session. Uh, one three zero nine golf on the three six zero radio five thousand five hundred doing turns around the point. So their airspace ends at 7,500. They told us that we could change frequency a little early, but. <clears throat> they cold at all? No, not yet. <laughs> I'm sweating. Four traffic with a 17, so the <clears throat> zero, zero 05, sorry, zero 045 radio, 24 miles, Drake. 9,100, we'll be setting up for the Iowa Philadelphia Cloudy. More traffic. Thanks for being good to 29 Sierra on the uh, 3220 degree radio, 19 or 2 miles from Drake, 8,300 doing. So I see we're still climbing. At what point uh, uh, is what's your traffic. set flying out? So right now oh, we're going to head up, uh, we're going to climb up to 9,500. So, um, when we look on here, we can see we got our maximum elevation figure, which is that number right Can't there on the pink thing. line, 8,200. And as we get over here, think so, so 9,500 is the top of their airspace. Our traffic pattern altitude is 8,000, so um, we're going to climb up to 9,500. There's it's special, there when you're on a certain route, there I'll is a, uh, to verify, uh, if you're basically headed on the, uh, the headed uh, east, the it's the odd spot. numbers plus 500, and when you're headed west, it's even numbers plus uh, 500. Yeah, so so yes, we're going to climb up to 9,500. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Quite traffic, we're going to 7,500 trade. Uh, we'll call it the 015 radial, uh, 14 miles out, heading out to the Clark Airport. Transitioning over the uh, Clark Park area. Some of those guys are hard to understand. Yeah, sometimes you just uh, have no idea. Radio. So as we're climbing, as the air gets less dense, we want we can start rolling back the mixture a little bit. See, like right there, we just got 10 RPMs. So when we're climbing, make sure our throttle's pushed in all the way. Hello, traffic, riddle 48. Off the trick radio 265, 9,000 miles out, 5,800, descending 5,600, setting up for some S turns. Yellow. The other thing we can do is we can look right here for the cylinder head temperatures, and when those, the leaner it gets, the hotter they get, right? So as we lean it, well, we drop 10 RPMs, but as we get over 400, now we're starting to lose RPMs, so for how I fly, we, uh, I prefer peak RPM, so we're going to go back to about 20, try to get back to about 2410. Just find that sweet spot. Yeah. Yep, just find that sweet spot. We went from our fuel flow being seven gallons an hour to down to six.
So we're going to get, you were asking earlier about endurance. That's going to give us better endurance. All right, so so this is showing us from Flagstaff, we're 44 miles. <clears throat> How are you feeling? Good. Just absorbing it all, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is a lot, isn't it? It's cool. But my only other experience was in that, that plane I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. Where we were doing sketchy stuff anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like doing sketchy stuff. I like to. I like the nice, uneventful flights where we just get to go and fly, see the scenery of Arizona, and go home at the end of the day without uh, it, without being in a body bag or without uh, losing my certificate. That's a. Those are good goals to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Golf. We're going to be making a left turn to enter back into the northern bald spot. Uh, we might get close to the southern bald spot, but we're not planning on staying in there. We're going to maintain our present heading because we're trying to do a uh, correction as turns over there. So we'll be maintaining our current heading. We'll stay at 5-5. Five five. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, so we got a couple airplanes up ahead of us. I can't actually see them. I can just see them. They're showing up on here. Yeah. So I know earlier we were talking, they show up on here. So this is, again, this is a good backup, but primarily what we're doing is we're looking outside and we use this. I tend to use this to kind of say, okay, where's the airplane at? It's over in this area. And so when it's over in this area, I'm going to look over here until I find it. And then I'll, I'll look and then also looking around for other airplanes. And then if I don't see it, then, okay, then... Uh, did it move? Okay, now it's supposed to be over here. Okay, there it is. Clark, Clark traffic rule, 19, All right, there's 9,500, so we're going to level zero, off. Zero, five, radio, 19, Clark, Clark Airport, we're switching over to a few times on the call. Clark, we're going to reduce our power back to about 20, about 2,400. Clark traffic rule, 57,000 feet on the 360 degree radio. Mm -hmm. Drake. Twelve miles out, final point for the steep spirals. Look up below, we're going to be doing steep spirals on our present position. So one thing that you'll see me using is the trim. Now what the trim allows me to do is it's there's a tab on the tail so I can move this. Like right now I'm trimming it nose down. We're on our golf, Riddle 37, we're climbing and heading back to the Prescott Airport. So I can actually fly hands off right now by using the trim. Most okay. small airplanes have elevator Traffic trim, which is what this is. Three, uh, bigger five, airplanes two, will have rudder trim, too. So, so you're not having to hold I, on to I'm this. Nope. 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 Like right now, like uh, I, do to, uh, I do have to use rudder because I want to maintain call. coordination. Like right now, we're flying kind of like this, so and I want the airplane to fly straight. So I do have to use the rudder. That's what rudder trim would do. But like right now, otherwise, I can just hands off. But everything's looking good. Traffic, Riddle 68100 at above 7,200. Lazy 8's 24 miles out. Quarm. Clutch traffic, Riddle 57, 9,000 on a 360 radio, 12,000 miles to the spiral. Clutch traffic, look out below. But yeah, so like right now, our, our airspeed is about... Nine, uh, about 95 knots. Well, our ground speed's 88 knots, so we can also actually use that to try to determine where the wind is coming from. So we have a bit of a headwind, headwind. yeah. Little 57. Okay. Hey, are you doing emergency descent? Steve Spiral, actually, over at this point, Riddle 57. Roger, Riddle 37, we're going to uh, pass off your right side, kind of uh, towards the Chino Valley. All right. I'm kind of looking for you right now, Riddle 57. So then, so this is this is the part of airplane that some people get kind of bored with. I still like flying. So I enjoy being up in the air, but uh, we have time. You know, we still got 40 miles to go before we get to Flagstaff. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm, I always start to program the radios early. So I use this one for our weather, and then I'll use this one to talk to whoever I'm talking to. So right now I know... 125.8 is going to be our weather for Flagstaff. And then I will check to see, because if we're up high enough... You know, it's east. 
through South Contact Tower. Yeah, one, we're already two, getting our weather. Point three. Noted to emissions. Warning, runway 2 on right has been shortened. 4,396 feet available. 5G node on sync. Actually, I lied. We're airport. still, I didn't switch it. This is still on uh, Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good Prescott that we're getting train, it because we know our radio one works. Point. So we'll switch it over. India, one six five there six zero. Wind calm, visibility one zero. Sky clear. Point minus one three. Altimeter three zero. You approach runway two one in use. All right, so you're using runway two one. Flagstaff confirmation, India. Flagstaff. What's that? You're looking at flight stuff? Calm. Yeah, I'm looking at the runway right now. So it's they're oriented the same way that uh, Prescott is. So I, I know once we enter, since I got the mountain over here, the standard traffic pattern is left. It's left turns. And so with the mountain right there, I can tell that we're gonna we're most likely get left turns to uh, runway two one. So, so we're, we're gonna, gonna fly the runway and then come back. Yep, right? we're gonna fly in. The runway will be over here, and then we're gonna land. Crew traffic, Rudol 576700 on the 360 degree radio from 3, 12 miles hour. Descending for setting up for 8 tall pylons. Clear traffic. Yellow traffic, Rudol 486200, climbing 7500 off the Drake Radio 265. We're going to climb up to do some power on stall. Yellow. Traffic line 8, level 17,500, two miles, from, two miles to the northeast of Drake. Proceeding out towards uh, Clark Airport, we're going to do some maneuvers along the way. Uh, Press your traffic. So these mountains are very odd to me. It's like they come up and everything's plateaued. Yep. Like, instead of peaks, you know? Yep, that's Arizona for you. Because, like, so there's this is actually a wilderness area right through here. But it's Cottonwood, if you look down here, you can actually see the airport just traffic, over the tip of the mountain right there, that long flat strip. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Cottonwood Airport. Drake, 17 miles out at 6,800, climbing 7,000, heading back to Prescott. Final call. So they see us. Do we need to make any notification? No, so they're doing maneuvering. I mean, we could make a position report. Generally, I'm just monitoring and looking around. Um, like if I see someone close, I'll uh, I might call to them and say, "Hey, you know, we're gonna we're whatever our relationship is to you." Like for the to land at the airport down there, I absolutely would. I'd start making radio calls for that. But at that airport, you actually don't need a radio to fly there. Oh, really? Yes. Is there a tower on that airport? Air traffic no. okay. 37, three four zero degree radio above the DME from Drake. 7,100 feet to 77,000, head back to the Prescott Airport, Big Spring. All right, everything's looking good. Oil pressure's looking good. Temperature's looking good. Fuel quantity is looking good. Our flow has improved quite a bit, too. Yeah, once we level off and we start reducing that power, it, it uh, will reduce. So, yeah. Everything is looking good on this airplane. Okay, as far as maintaining the mixture, traffic, cylinder heads are like 330 to 370. Where you want to? 169, yeah, the bridge. Hold on one second until this guy's done talking. Say that again. Say that again. Um, as far as the mixture goes, cylinder head temperatures right from 330 to 370. Is that where you want it? Yeah, I tend to. You can do it off cylinder head temperature. I tend to do it off of RPM um, okay. because you can lean to maximum cylinder head temperature and then you can bring it back down. I'm good with this where it's at right now as well as we've got another temperature gauge over here. So, yeah, anything below 400 is okay, um, especially once we level off. You know, when we're climbing, we're full power, we're full throttle. But once we get up here, you know, right now we're probably about 65, 75% throttle. Okay. Just trying to learn stuff, you know. Yeah. Close traffic, 57, 5,600, southern boss spot, ace on pylon, close traffic, southern boss spot. All right. So, since you've never flown before, let's do this. Your controls. My controls. All right, your controls. All right, so you got your feet on the rudders. So you want to have your feet on the bottom of the rudders. Or on, on the bottom of the pedals, which is the rudder. So then what we're going to do, so 
when we want straight and level when we're flying VFR, what we want is the horizon will be about, for me, it's about three fingers above. And so we, when we're flying visual, we want to be looking outside. So we want to be able to tell what the airplane is doing in reference to um, the horizon, not in reference to the instruments. We reference the instruments, but we spend about 90% of our time outside. Okay, so like right now, Right now, we're we're turning to the right just a little bit. We want, you know, we have a decent horizon out there, so we want about like this. Okay. And you got the death grip on the yoke right there? Fingertips. Because right now, we can control this airplane. With fingertips. With fingertips. We can turn it to the left, or to the right. We can turn it to the left. We can climb, and we can descend with two fingers. So, and most of the time when you're flying, you're going to be flying with one hand on the yoke and one hand on the throttle. Okay. So. If I would be this way. Well, yeah, well, you would be, yeah, you'd be reversed. Because I'm, this is the pilot seat and that's the co-pilot seat. So, for right now, so we're straight and level right now. So, when we start to climb, it'll get thinner. So, it'll look like this. We know we're in a nose up attitude. And if we stay in a nose-up attitude like this, you can see if we don't increase power, okay, we're climbing and our airspeed starts to bleed off. And then the reverse is true if we descend. So we see when that horizon gets higher, we're descending. now we're descending and our airspeed's going to increase. So, now here's something kind of cool. You know, I talked a little bit about the trim earlier, yeah. but when we, when we talk about trim, the airplane will climb or descend at whatever Air airspeed it's trimmed radio. for. So if we reduce the power, we're descending at about 95. Hey, hello. Have a great day, everyone. It'll come up a little bit. It requires a little bit of fine tuning, but for the most part, that's what it's going to do. We add power back in. We go full power. And now without pulling back on the yoke, we're climbing. Right. So now we level back off, and then we can reduce a little bit of power, get her back to 2,400. So that's your basic climbing while we're looking outside. Now, when we turn, since we're offset to each side, let's go back up to 2,400. So go ahead and turn our yoke to the right. Give us a nice, easy turn. Traffic, so now one thing that I want to show you, you're descending a little bit, so we'll give a little bit of back pressure. So when we turn, we're losing a little bit of our lift, so we have to pull back a little bit so we can, uh, so we maintain level. Because right now I want you to maintain level. Okay. Now, our outer wing is going faster than our inner wing, so it's generating more lift. Yeah. Okay. So what we have to do is to correct for that is we have to use rudder. So on this gauge right here is called the inclinometer, and we can see the ball is a little to the right. So on the, on the rudder pedal, we step on the ball. So we step on the ball. More? Um, left or right? Right. The ball's to the right, okay. so we're going to step on it. Give it more. Give it more. Just rudder, not yoke. Okay. We're descending a little bit. More rudder, so we should be about right there. So, this when the ball is in the middle and we're turning, that's called remaining coordinated. So okay. we want to maintain coordination throughout the flight. So, now when you look outside, where's the horizon going through the going through the dash? That's what we want to. That's what we want to see. Okay. It does take a little coordination too. It does. Yeah. And we're descending, so we want to pull back just a little bit to right about there. Okay, not bad for your first time. All right, so now let's do a turn to the left. And it's the same concept as we... Uh, get off the rudder. Yeah, so, yep, you're going to... I can feel you on the rudders, and yes, as we, we move out of the turn, yes, we change rudder, and then we want... So, and we reference the instruments. So our ball is a little to the right, so we need a little less left rudder. We need more right rudder. Okay. There we go. And we can turn a little bit more than that. And then just keep an eye out that we're descending. So give me a straight and level turn, which will be somewhere about right in here. Yep, so a nice, nice easy turn just around the mountains, just like this. Okay. 
turn back to the right. And now when we're pulling back, when we're increasing our back pressure, we don't need a whole lot. We just want enough to just maintain level or to maintain our altitude. Okay. Should I be correcting you? Yeah. And so our ball's to the right, so we're going to push right rudder. A little more. Everybody have a great day. Yep, just like that. And our turn's getting a little steep, so we're going to roll out a little bit. Just a nice, easy turn. And just keep us turning around. Just keep us in the standard, just keep us in that same bank. This is good. This is a nice level turn right here. All right, and roll us wings level. And that's how you turn an airplane. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So I should get back on course? Yeah, we can get back on course. We're kind of meandering our way that way. Okay. Um, but let's climb back up to 9,500. So to climb, go ahead and push in full power. And all of our throttle movements are nice and easy. And then when we're climbing, our best rate of climb is 76. That's gonna, we're gonna gain the most altitude the quickest. And we also, anytime we add power, we're always checking coordination. We're always ra adding right rudder. So like right now we're descending, but we wanna climb. So we're gonna give a little bit of back pressure and we want wings level. That's a little too much, so we want to be forward just a little bit. Yep, just like that. There it is, 76 yep. right in that area. Yep, right around 76 in there. And we're over 95 now, so we should level out. Yep, we are over 9,500. Yep, so now we Throttle level off. Up. No, so we don't want to take the power out yet because we're at, when we're climbing, we're at 76, and we level off, we want to get our airspeed up. Okay. So just maintain coordination. So just a little bit of right rudder. Okay, and then once our airspeed hits about 90 knots, go ahead and reduce our power, nice and smooth, back to about 2,400. We're at 8,500. We're north, northwest now, tracking the 350 degree radial from Drake. Uh, about uh, eight miles uh, heading out towards Valley. Air traffic, runway 98, level 11,000 feet, just over the northern edge of the northern ball spot. We are right. doing some slow so what you think about that? towards Clark that was awesome. Oil. Fantastic. All right. And so, then, go ahead. The action of the rudder. Yes. What does it make the plane actually do? So, the rudder, all right, my controls? Yes, your you controls. My controls, okay. So, the rudder is allows us to yaw the airplane, so we can turn the airplane this way, we can turn the airplane this way. Okay. And there's different maneuvers that we do with that, but really, so when our, when our upper wing, when we're in that turn, is generating more lift, that's called adverse yaw. Because the nose, it wasn't really, I think it was because we were descending, it really didn't want to do it. But like, when we go into a turn, it should want, the nose want, should want to move up to the left. It should want to move up to that wing that's generating more lift. And so that's why we want to add rudder to correct that and keep the nose in coordination. Okay. I've been flying airplanes, and so it's it's kind of it's kind of become habit. Like when you start turning, you start pushing rudder. When you start turning this way, you start pushing a little bit of rudder. And it comes with time. It comes with practice. Absolutely. So when I flew the helicopters, you didn't do that because the the pedals are your anti torque. So when you turn, when you got going at a certain speed in the helicopter, it's streamlined. So I always thought that uh, when I started flying airplanes. Um, it was, I had to remember to use the rudder, but. but. Yeah, we're just making our way towards Flagstaff, having some fun and. It's a beautiful day. Oh, oh, it is a beautiful day and hopefully you're learning something. I mean, look at the mountains out here. It doesn't get much better than this. No, this is beautiful. All right, so we're 20 miles out from Flagstaff, so we'll start listening. And it's 1 3, altimeter 3029. Expect a visual approach from late 2 1 in use. By the initial contact, you have India. Information, India. Flagstaff information, India, 1656 Zulu. Wind call, 
Palm, visibility one zero, sky clear, temperature zero, dew point minus one three, altimeter three zero two nine. Expect a visual approach runway two one in use. Advise on initial contact you have India. Flight that's our information India one six. All right, so we know it's information India. We can start setting the radios. We're out past all the training aircraft. So 134.55. And then we can put it in. Here is Niner Hotel Golf. Wind, calm runway 2-1, clear for takeoff. Traffic midfield downwind into the uh, TRJ-7. They just punched okay. in like staff tower. Runway 2-1 yes. and uh, that uh, midfield downwind traffic is in sight for Sears Niner Hotel Golf. So they got a couple jets out there right now, and we can start to see them on the on the scope right there. I was hoping there was going to be there wasn't going to be anything going on out there. So there should be an airplane. There's an airplane right there, 1,500 feet below us. Got it. Got it. There's another one coming up over there. He should be. A second. Here, the engine RPM is a little high. There's another one coming up. He's 2,500 feet below us, so he's no factor. I don't have visual yet. Yeah, airplane spotting is almost a, uh, a craft in this thing. <laughs> you know, okay, well, just looking for these, just the go, looking for wind, these different uh, one, Okay. Land. Oh, yep, I see him over there, too. Good eyes. But he's not showing here, or is he just further out this way? <laughs> I don't know why he's not showing on here. It might be the zoom on here, or that might be them showing up over there. This is, again, this is why you can't trust this. You've got to be looking outside. Is this based off of ADSB? Yes, this is ADSB. Okay. That's what's showing up on here. Like my my Sentry, okay, which right. is what I'm getting my information from, is, uh, is ADSB. We had a problem with one of the aircraft in um, police helicopters in San Diego, the San Diego PD helicopter. Yeah. They come into our AOR, and they would turn off their ADS-B. Ooh. And sometimes be flying at 300 feet. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that was a problem. <laughs> what time is it? 10.30? Maintenance Turbulence? Ah, uh, just a little bit. Like this is this is overall this is very good air. Eight off maintenance uh, proceed on Alpha to the Alright, what well, is flight staff ground one two one nine? Okay, so we have Flagstaff Tower, what's ground? So ground is what you're gonna so what Tower really controls aircraft coming, getting in onto the runway and off the runway. That's really what tower does. Ground controls everything on the ground. Okay. So, because what we're going to do is we're going to land. They'll probably send us over to transient park. Uh, actually, we'll just do a, we're going to do a full stop taxi back. So we're just going to land. We're going to get off the runway. We're going to taxi back to the runway. We'll turn off all the cameras and then we'll depart. Okay. And we'll just come back this way. We'll go, go sightsee. Or maybe we'll do some different, you know, I'll, uh, we'll do some different maneuvers. I'll show you or I'll have you do them. Depends on how busy it is. If it's, uh, if it's not too busy, I could have you, um, take, I could have you do the, do a takeoff. I'll walk you through it. Okay. Hey, uh, maintenance, uh, Roger.
All right, looks like there's an airplane. So he's showing only 200 feet and climbing. All right, so I think I can see the airport right there. See looks that? like it, yep. The snow with the airport in the middle. So we are to the southwest, about 15 miles. Double check. Cemetery 3029. Expect the visual approach runway 21 in use. By the initial contact, you have India. Still India. All right. So let's go ahead and call the tower. See what they have. Well, we'll wait till we're 10 miles out because their delta. Uh, Prescott has a bigger ring around theirs. There, I think that their delta is actually six miles. It's a delta class airspace. Um, this is a delta as well, but they're only. It looks like they're only the four miles. So we're going to. We can see the airport. We can call them from here. But what what we're going to do is I'm going to offset a little bit. So hopefully they can just tell me enter a downwind. So we got our traffic pattern, which is upwind, crosswind, downwind, base, and then final. And so I'm just going to try to enter on the downwind. Okay. To make it easier on us and easier on them. Just in the altitude back up. Yeah, I mean, we're, our altitude where we're at right now is fine. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, let's see, we should have an airplane over here. I'm sure they're down in the canyon. It says they're about 2,400 feet below us. No factor. I'm not a big one on canyon carving because these airplanes are a little sluggish to respond. I don't know what that is built right in the middle there. Like, you got a bunch of trees and then just something. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know how that got built either. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, that makes it easy to identify the airport. Absolutely. All right, let's turn our cabin heat on. So we got these two buttons over here. We're going to move that out just a little bit. It'll open the vent and give us a little bit of heat. It's 32 degrees where we're at right now. Yeah, feet are getting a little chilly. Yeah, well, that's that's good because that'll heat up your feet. <laughs> Airspace ahead. Airspace ahead. Airspace ahead. Airspace ahead. All right, well. I hear a very faint message yeah, that's, repeating itself. Yeah, that's, that's this. I don't know. It's the avionics. Airspace ahead. All right, let's call the tower. Flagstaff Tower, November 402, Echo Romeo, about 11 miles to the southwest. Information India with like a full stop taxi back. Airspace ahead. November uh, 402, Echo Romeo, Flagstaff Tower, you better set up for a left or right down for runway 21. We're, we're set up for a left downwind for runway 21. Okay. November 2, Echo Romeo, report, uh, or enter left down for runway 21, report midfield downwind. Okay, we're going to enter a left downwind for runway 21 and, and, and report a midfield downwind, November 402 Echo Romeo. All right, so for Delta airports, all they have to do is say our tail number and we can enter. And so like for Sky Harbor, that's a Bravo, it's a little different story. But he, we've established two-way communications, so we're good to go to fly. Now, I, wouldn't, I didn't think he'd give us a right pattern, but since he was going to give us the option, um, we're already set up on a left, and when he says report a mid uh, midfield downwind, so when we're about halfway down the runway, we're going to tell him, and then he's going to give us our landing clearance. Okay. But he's already told us he, we've established two-way radio communications, so we're good to enter the uh, airspace and approach the airport. Airspace ahead. Airspace ahead. Airspace ahead. Airspace ahead. I don't know what it is. I can hear it. I don't know what it is. We'll check it out once we get on the ground. It might be some of the, the camera stuff in the back. Uh. Airspace ahead. 
And my wallet's been killing me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't wear, uh, I don't put my wallet in the back pocket for that very reason. I always, uh, I put it, I wear cargo pants and always have it in the side. Airspace ahead. Airspace. Baron 211 Mike, Whiskey, Flagstaff Ground. You are cleared to Ogden Airport via the Flagstaff One Departure. Ahead. Oats Transition and the Papa Golf Sierra. On a departure climb maintain 12,000. Uh, depart Phoenix departure frequency is 126.37, about 4152. So that's, a, that's an instrument approach departure. It sounds like this guy's running everything. Ahead. Airspace ahead. Instrument approach. Yes, yeah, so there's different types of approaches. Right now we're doing a visual approach. So an instrument approach is based off the gauges Baron, of the instruments. Uh, two and one, Mike Whiskey. Yeah, so, so flash off one departure, Oats transition, then Papa Golf Sierra, and the rest of Rebecca is correct. Yeah. So we have like what we're doing. We're we're flying based on being able to see. Like we could take off. I am rated that we could take off, and I can teach it that we can't. Uh, that we can take off when we can't see. Not a good idea because if we can't see up here at this temperature, we're gonna, we're gonna we're to gonna pick up uh, ice. Phoenix, Sky Airport, and up this airplane cannot Oak handle ice. Transition, then it's filed. Final departure climb maintain one two thousand. Expect lower with Phoenix departure. How would we know if we're picking up ice? One, two, we look out here. Seven, 12, you'd four, actually see it on the yeah, you'd see it on the pitot tube on the small areas. It's gonna start to build up first, and you have to be in the condition for it. And we do not want to be in the condition for it. So like, if, and so we need visible moisture, and then uh, we need to be at or below the and freezing. Point. Point, right? So if we had those two conditions, we wouldn't be flying. But like, it's a clear day, so it could be negative 10 right now, and we're not going to pick up ice because we don't have any visual moisture. Okay. Any visible moisture. Airspace ahead. We're just kind of slowly descending down to pattern altitude, which is 8,004. There should be a jet taken off. And it's going to be approaching this way. Yeah, so it's based on magnetic heading. So runway 21 is over here. This is 3. They had quite a bit of snow out here. They did. There is quite a bit of snow out here. All right, we're coming up on 8,000, so we'll level off. So, when we're preparing to land, there's a, there's a, a acronym called GLUMPS. So it's, our gas is on both, our landing light comes on, our so our undercarriage is fixed. If we had like a retractable landing gear, we'd put it down now. Our mixture, we're gonna leave it set for high elevation. So normally you go full rich, but at high elevation, it's okay to leave it. Yeah, well, I'm gonna leave it here because we're a little bit higher. I'll, I'll bring it in a little bit, but yeah, we don't want full rich or we could foul the plugs. And then um, our prop is spinning. Uh, if we had a, 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 a controllable pitch prop, we'd put it full forward. And then we make sure our seat belts are on. Okay. And now we're just entering the traffic pattern. I'm excited because I've never been to this airport and I've always wanted to fly here. Awesome. And then once we hit about midfield, we'll call the tower and let them know where we're at. And Flagstaff Tower, November 402 Echo Romeo is midfield downwind. November 402 Echo Romeo, uh, runway 21, wind calm, clear to land. Runway 21, clear to land, November 402 Echo Romeo. All right, winds are calm, so we're good there. So now we're going to start 
configuring to land. So we're going to come a beam our landing point. So I'm going to use the numbers. Empire 473, the float time of the Use the uh, numbers uh, as our landing Empire point. From right here, we're going to reduce our power down to 1500. And then we're going to trim for about 75. And we're below 110. We're going to add flaps 10. Which is going to start to slow us down. And then we're going to start our descent. Add a little bit of power since we're below 15, 75, flying out about 45 degrees from our aiming point. Then we turn base. Add a little bit more power. Fire 47, uh, 53, do you want us to uh, hold right. and, uh, short at an intersection and just keep us out of the way, wait for the flow? right here, so now we're on base, below in the white arc, flaps 2-5, okay, we'll go all the way to reduce the some power, we want After about we land. 70 right here, what's that? After we land, I want you to explain what okay. that does to me. Alright, so we're checking final is clear, fly a little over a little more, making sure our airspeed stays good, we're coming in a little high, but I like that. Better too much air, uh, too much altitude than not enough. And then we're on short final right here, full flaps. And then we want about 65. Oh yeah, the winds are nice and calm. So we're coming in at 65, right over our aiming point, level off, about 10 feet over the runway. And then we're going to let her sink, start the flare, mains, and the nose wheel. Then we apply... Baron 211 Mike Whiskey, Flight 6 Grammar, and we 2 inch XP Alpha. Then we're going to apply back pressure on the yoke for our aerodynamic braking. And then we're going to apply brakes. We don't want to jam the brakes because November, we don't. November, uh, 2 Echo us. Romeo, turn right, uh, next taxiway, and uh, give way to the... To November 402 Echo Romeo, uh, you can taxi runway 21 via Alpha. Uh, 402 Echo Romeo, okay, so I'm good to exit here, Alpha 4, and then 21 via Alpha. November 2 Echo Romeo, affirmative. Okay, November 402 Echo Romeo. That was kind of weird. All right, so we are clear left, center, and right. Flaps go up, and then we're going to taxi back. And November 402 Echo Romeo, do you want, us re want me to remain this frequency or switch to ground? Uh, November 402 Echo Romeo, yeah, contact uh, ground, and then when you're ready to board, just contact tower. All right, we will contact ground November 402 Echo Romeo. All right, so... Flagstaff Ground, November 402, Echo Romeo is with you. So that was kind of weird. I haven't had that before where they say, I don't know. When the instruction is kind of unclear like that, so clear center, clear right, and then we have a run-up area over here. November 402, Echo Romeo, Flagstaff Ground, have you land clear? Um, so one of the things is, like, right there, he said next taxiway. I was, uh, the next taxiway was the one that was right there, and I can make that, but I didn't know if he meant the one after that. I was confused on that as well. Yeah, so. It seemed like if he meant that one, it was a little last minute. Right. <clears throat> Look at all that snow. Something you don't see in, what, San Diego? No. Empire 4753, wind calm, runway 2, on quick for takeoff. And haven't had really much in North Carolina either. Yeah. So this is, I think this is the weather reporting station, because I, I heard him talking to the the ATIS, or the uh, AWAS uh, maintenance. So that's kind of interesting. So do they have heated taxiways and runways? No. Like, is the ground heated? Yeah. No, they have snow, snow, removal, of, uh, for, uh, oh. snow removal equipment. Clear to Phoenix. Cessna 234 with scale for Flagstaff Tower and a right base for uh, runway 21, correction, left base runway 21 for it, uh, three miles out. All right, clear center, clear right. Well, Which, it is beautiful. 
Yeah, what'd you think of my, uh, you think of my landing? I like it. <laughs> that was a good landing. That was awesome. A little baby FedEx. Oh, I'd love to do that. That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be a cool job. That'd be a cool job. November 402 Echo Romeo, are you up uh, flight center? Uh, November 402 Echo Romeo is on ground. November uh, 402 Echo Romeo, Roger, advise me ready to depart. Affirmative, we'll let you know when we're ready. November 402 Echo Romeo. Empire 473, contact departure. I don't know if he keeps asking because he wants us to get out of here. <laughs> Skywest, uh, 3008, flight center ground, you're ready to copy. Ready to copy, Skywest 3008. Skywest 3008, you were cleared to Phoenix Airport via Flag Staff 1 departure, Oats transition then south. Upon car departure, climb maintain 12,000, expect 16,000, three minutes after departure. Phoenix departure frequency is 126.37, squawk 4335. Three, three, Alright, so I'm actually going to offset a little bit here so we can look behind us, but then I'm going to... Uh, I have to Phoenix, so just advise when you're pushing. All right, this is going to conclude our flight for the day. Um, I hope you learned something, and we will see you in the next one.